Ginkgo is a tree that is one of the oldest surviving trees on the face of the earth. When the dinosaurs roamed the earth, there was ginkgo. Uh, ginkgo biloba, biloba means two lobes, and it's in the ginkgo ACA family. And one of the reasons why ginkgo is so celebrated is it survives drought, it, it survives pestilence, intense sun. A lot of city streets plant ginkgo along the streets. I know Santa Cruz has ginkgo along the streets and Washington DC, um, Oregon. Sometimes it's called maiden hair tree. The leaves are said to look a little like a maiden hair fern, but it's really not um, that. And the name ginkgo comes from the Japanese word for a type of apricot because ginkgo does produce these kinds of fruits which are used, the seeds are eaten um, often at weddings, they dye them red. However, not to be sexist, but if you were to plant a ginkgo tree, you do not want to plant the females because when these fruits fall, they smell like dog poop. <laughs> and you do not want people tracking that into your house. It's really awful. But the seeds in there are, are kind of good. So ginkgo's gotten a lot of press. Um, it's one of the most researched herbs in Europe. And we think of it as a brain tonic. But according to Chinese medicine, things that nourish our brain, the energy really comes from nourishing our kidneys. It's said that the brain is the seat of marrow governed by the kidneys. So if we want to think now about preventing Alzheimer's disease, we want to think about nourishing our kidneys now. So that means, you know, eating lots of black foods. You know, chia and black rice. I love, if I'm going to eat rice, forget brown rice, black rice, wild rice. Black means lots of minerals. So ginkgo contains compounds called ginkolides, which improve neurotransmission. And um, it also helps to supply more oxygen to the body. And it also strengthens fragile capillaries. So think of ginkgo as a great herb for regenerating um, after an accident, after scarring, um, any type of wound. We do know it's high in vitamin C, beta carotene, and again, those ginkgolides. Now, usually when we collect leaves, we're going to collect them when they're nice and green. But ginkgo is the exception. With ginkgo, you want them when they're yellow in the fall because that's when they're highest in flavonoids. And flavonoids are those components that strengthen our capillaries. So um, yeah, it's a little unusual. So if you get a shipment of ginkgo leaves and they look yellow, don't send them back. Know that that's actually desirable. And um, fl other flavonoids that we know, we talked about bioflavonoids that are in the citrus peel that also strengthens the capillaries. Um, ginkgo also contains rutin, which is found in buckwheat. Um, buckwheat is not um, a grain technically, it's in the rhubarb family. So gink uh, buckwheat is really good for strengthening people that live in a cold climate. But ginkgo contains that as well. And um, it survived the ice age. So that's really quite an amazing tree. And um, it does have male and female plants. Tomorrow we're going to go to some park and look at plants in the wild. And I love to we'll taste different things and see what's wild. You know, I lived for two and a half years in a teepee and ate nothing but wild edible plants. So I know you can do it. <laughs> it's good to know. I mean, I love that there's whole foods too. But it's nice to know, like, what if there wasn't, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, next.